Selling your vision and your business to a variety of stakeholders is key when it comes to getting the right people on board, no matter if it's employees, investors, or customers. In this panel to me I, today, I have um, amazing participants who are going to tell you what it needs to pitch for what you want. I have with me today Ms. Capelle Tatzberger, who is Director of the Startup Services at the Vienna Business Agency. I have with me Mr. Tom Tomislav uh, Stipitz, who is Partner and Advisor at Artis. And I have with me uh, Mr. Alexander Schönecker, who is Managing Director at Philip Morris Austria. So let's start by getting to know you a little bit better. Maybe briefly introduce yourselves in one or two sentences. Who are you? What do you do? And where do you do it? Maybe we just start with you, Capelle. Thank you. Hello also from my side. We at the Vienna Business Agency try to support uh, Vienna businesses uh, with funding services and real estates. But we also have very good programs and soft landing programs for international startups and companies. So if you're interested in the location, business location, Vienna, I think we are the right spot to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. So my name is Tommy Stipic. I'm a tax advisor at Artus. We are a mid-sized tax consulting uh, company located in Vienna, but also with, with international connections. And some of our main focus are the consulting of startups, also in digitalization and HR. And I'm glad to be a part of this final discussion, panel discussion today. And a big thank and congratulation to the whole female factor team. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Alexander Schöniger. I'm the managing director of Philip Morris Austria. Um, Philip Morris is undergoing a very large transformation um, process. And in this process, they're reviewing the project-based organization. They are moving towards an agile organization. And uh, part of that agility uh, is, of course, looking at startups while they are performing uh, in their network. And uh, one of the elements that we are very interested in internally and externally is how pitches are undertaken. So in order to be successful, we also ask our employees to look at pitching. Very interesting. Thank you all for being here. So question number one, thinking back to all the pitches and presentations you have heard so far, which ones stood out to you and why? Maybe we start with you, Alexander, this time. Yes, one that has stayed in my mind is uh, in early 2000, I was attending in Amsterdam a convention and there there was Dr. Professor Joshua Silver. Uh, he's a professor of physics at the Oxford University. and. Um, he was stating the issue on vision impairment that affects hundreds of millions of people due to the fact there's only one optometrist um, in developing countries for 600,000 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the opportunity behind it is that you could elevate hundreds of millions of people out of poverty and generate $120 billion according to, to the WHO on productivity. So his solution was to then from give these people self-adjusting eyewear. So those glasses would have basically have two plastic lenses and in between a silicon pocket and people in themselves, they can adjust the glasses. And that I found it was a very good, um, very short pitch, but very large opportunities and very well embedded in the context. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So for me, I heard uh, one thing that was two years ago in the, on a G2 event in Zagreb. There was a certain fries and it was a very charismatic guy who presents his product on stage. And it was the whole package or the combination. So the product demonstration and the storytelling behind it, because he tell the story about the ideas, the planning, the production, and now the final product. And the personal touch behind it was very fine. And afterwards, the hard facts. So I think the first impression was, for me, this was very nice. So storytelling was... Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Gabriela? Now for me, it was a very young lady. She just finished her studies and she presented her new startup. And it was an educational platform. And she was so well prepared. And what was really amazing was her passion and also the very, very clear vision she had for the world and how she would like to achieve that. So besides the hard facts, it was really this very clear vision. This is why I'm doing that. And this is my goal for the world. And I was really impressed by this young woman. Very good. Thank you. So let's stay with pitching and presenting, of course. What is the one thing, in your opinion, that every founder presenter has to get right? when it comes to presenting the idea, pitching, 
a business or a vision? What's the number one thing for you? Gabriele, would you like to start? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, authenticity. So it really, besides the hard facts, the person really has to uh, show that they can do it mm -hmm. and that they are the right people for it. Mm -hmm. Tommy? I would say for me, the, the quantitative value of the product. So that the founder know what is the value of his product and also that they can transport it to the investor, the value of his product. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alexander? Yeah, the elements I'm looking is around problem definition. Okay. Have people really asked the right questions? Yeah. Um, have they looked at the right assumptions? Um, do they have the facts and figures and not just opinionated or some belief systems that they interpret? So once they get that right, then the solution is then secondary. Okay, so is it really a problem in this case? Are they looking at the, the, yes. you know, so is this the real the problem? Is it have not they just really opinions? Yeah. The real problem they've defined, and mm -hmm. have they not, is it not a symptom, for example, yeah. or yeah. is it the, the causality? Is it clear? Yeah. Um, okay. And have they really come to, to the very point where you understand how it unfolds? Mm -hmm. And have you also understand the context of it and mm -hmm. all the environment? Mm -hmm. And maybe it's also the difference which audience you have. Is it an investor? Is it a test client? Or who is the audience you're talking to? It uh, that makes a difference how you prepare and what your storyline is, maybe. Yeah, true. Yeah, good point. Um, Alexander, when seeing a pitch, a presentation of a project, a vision, a business, or an idea for the first time, what is it that you personally are looking for? Yeah, I will tell you how then I would evaluate, for example, when the employees uh, have to pitch. And, and there we really want to understand, um, as a consumer-centric company, whether they have identified a consumer pain point, um, looking at the right facts and figures along the consumer journey. That can be at any touch point with the consumer. And then we would ask them to understand clearly um, where they um, have identified it, and of course, the entire sequence from the opportunity that is arising from the relevancy, then from the solution set, and also important, what assumptions have they taken? And, and have they tested some of the assumptions prior to then coming to the pitch? The second element is I want to understand the team. Is it the right team, the right capabilities, cap mm -hmm. capacity and expertise that they have? Why are the right people to work on? And also very important, we have a kind of positive culture of failure Meaning then, have you understood when you have your shortstop condition, when you say, okay, um, we want to fail fast. So understanding then those elements are important. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. The others would say the same, agree? Yeah. Team is very important, right? Team is very important, yeah. yes. Okay. Tommy, except for the team, what are the three main numbers that every founder needs to get right? So for instance, as a tax advisor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, first of all, the costs. Cost. So uh, the costs are essential. So as a founder, you have to know the costs of your product. So what are the production costs, marketing, selling costs, and so go on. So if you know the cost of your product, you also know the required investment you need to. Uh, secondly, the revenue. So after knowing your costs, you have to address the break-even point, which means what is the minimum revenue needed that you can manage the costs. And so depending on the selling price, market situation, of course, you can arrange it. And last but not least is the cash flow. So the cash flow, a good cash flow calculation, liquidation, financial planning is essential because only if you had such a, a good calculation, you are able to uh, manage all the current costs at a time. And with uh, these three numbers, so revenue costs and the um, cash, flow, cash flow, you are able to calculate a lot of key figures, a lot of main key figures, like return on investment, earnings before interest and tax, return on sales, and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, yeah. Maybe related to the cost, revenue as well. Gabriele, what do you say? What does it need for a startup to get an investment or to get funding? Mm -hmm. First of all, I think you as a startup have, has, have to have a clear picture. What are your milestones? What is your plan? Because otherwise, nobody will believe on your plan, so to say. And uh, looking at the funding side, as we at the Vienna Business Agency are also giving funding to international uh, companies, but also Viennese ones, um, it's very important to really um, 
apply for the fundings before you start to do your work. You have to have a plan and a project, and then you have to check out, is there a funding program existing that really fits for you? Mm -hmm. We in Austria we have the luxury to have, to have many funding programs, uh, which means you have to look very clearly, okay, which program really fits for you. And the same is true also for investors. If you're looking for investors, especially in the uh, uh, pre-seed phase and if uh, thinking of business angels it's not just the money it's really also do they have the networks do they have the competence the capacities to really help you besides the money mm -hmm. and then coming back to the uh, public funding scheme it's really we really ask everybody to really get in touch with the program managers because they can tell you exactly okay which costs you can apply for uh, where is the focus? What are the really important questions? And then you have, you know, prepared exactly the numbers, the numbers. <laughs> as well. And uh, you have really to prepare well. And we all also always say, please apply if you're ready and not just apply somehow. Because the jury, they can just decide according to the papers they have. And later on in the second stage, when you have a hearing, then you can show you. But mm -hmm. before that, the text and the numbers must, must be very clear and convincing. Otherwise, you will not get the chance for a hearing. So this is what we always say. And, um, and maybe also talk to people who, who already have done it. Because I know from many startups, the process to getting in touch with an investor and to finally, you know, come to an agreement, it's a long-term process. Long journey, yeah. Yes, you know that as well. <laughs> and uh, it's good to talk to people who have done it. And the same is true also for public funding because yeah. there are many companies there who got it. So you can talk to them, how, how did you prepare? What is also, don't underestimate how much work it is. Mm -hmm. So it's really, yeah, talk to people who have done it already. Mm -hmm. Good advice. So we've heard the team is very important. Um, talking to people that um, have done it before, getting your numbers right. Also getting the problem right. Is it really a problem or is it just an assumption or an opinion? I have one last question before we dig into our Q&A on uh, Slido, which is which advice do you have for the future female founders, female leaders out there when it comes to presenting, pitching, presenting their ideas themselves, their visions, their businesses? What is your number one advice? Maybe, Alexander, you want to start. Yeah, I'll start with a quote. Um, it goes like that where you're saying, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. <laughs> so I think in that perspective, uh, I would say it's an iterative and inverse proce process where you start to think about your idea and then you start to make your pitch potentially the 10 minutes and five minutes, three minutes, then you go to the elevator pitch. And then you try to see with what you feel most comfortable. And then once you have then developed that, then I think you add the storytelling and you work on your emotional ladder starting from the uh, creating the interest um, down to the call to action at the end, mm -hmm. where you can see this is the only uh, relevant path and create those strong images uh, to the people that you are asking to invest into your company. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very good advice. Tommy. Well, for me, uh, self-confidence, mm -hmm. determination, and believing in your product. So if you're not believe in your product, why anybody else should do it. Self-confidence is very important. Good point, yeah. Gabriele. Just do it. Don't <laughs> hesitate. Nobody is perfect. And trial and error is very important. <laughs> Fail fast, yes. we learned today. <laughs> okay, then let's check out the questions. I saw that a lot of questions were popping in. Um, I'll just start reading them out um, from top to bottom. Um, we have here, well, in your perspective, what does a startup need to get public funding? We have talked about this. Um, what do we have? Oh, um, there is from Kasia to Tomislav. What would you tell a woman to pay attention to specifically while pitching in front of a group of men? Oh, it's a hard question for... <laughs> <laughs> it says specifically to you. <laughs> um, I think the hard facts for men are very important. Hard facts, so okay. I have some also discussion with, uh, with my colleague. And for men, I think the hard facts are important. So also calculations, uh, cost calculation, forecasts, and also the key figures. Okay. I think the man keeps more uh, more focus on this, like on the, um, yes, on the um, emotional side. 
Okay, Alexander, would you agree? Well, also what I mentioned before, I would give all the advice regardless of, uh, irregardless of gender. So I believe whether this is a, a pitch given by, by a, a women team or by men team, um, I think what, what counts is the content. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe if the investor doesn't understand what you want to do, he's not the right one. I know from an example who had a pitch before just male investors and they just showed her this doesn't work out for them. And two days later, she got a call from one of the investors. He told her, I, I got home and I talked uh, to my wife and she was t totally excited and she thought this is a perfect idea and that's exactly what we need and that's why he called her and he she's mm -hmm. very successful now I just don't name the company she's really European wide very successful and the investor is very happy that he invested in her <laughs> so <laughs> maybe sometimes it needs time as well <laughs> maybe yeah and to add to your example right now the change within our company at Philip Morris, Austria are two-thirds women and they're young women. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I think the, the, the times are changing in that, that respect. Good. Very good. <laughs> um, from Tanisha to everyone, what was one of your biggest pitching mistakes or mistake you see people make often? To go in too many details. Okay. So a very clear message with the most important KPIs and hard facts is important. If they just, you know, name hundreds of numbers, it's just too much. They Would you agree on that? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the numbers? <laughs> yes, of course. And, okay. and not good prepared. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also what would be a mistake for you or a no-go in pitching? Or what was a mistake that maybe happened to you? Yeah, normally you can see the whether people have really brought forward the essence. Mm -hmm. and therefore, I mentioned the iterative process that is very important that you yourself feel comfortable at any length uh, to give the right content the right. Um, and sometimes it should be rather than your comfort with the length or with your comfort with the content that will define the length mm -hmm. if you can't give the message in four minutes well then ask for 10 minutes or just come with the teaser and afterwards give the full story mm -hmm. but you 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 need to make sure that this is a rounded story mm -hmm. so the mistake in this case would be to not being able to have different lengths. I think that the mistake is normally, as you said, preparation. I think yeah. any negotiation or any kind of pitching I've attended is always a matter of, of reiterating in your mind uh, and, and really to feel comfortable at the end and confident and it comes out of the comfort. Mm -hmm. um, to Gabriele, you talked about um, what you definitely should include in your pitch. But what is the one thing you should not do while selling your vision? It should not be completely unrealistic. So the passion has to be there, a clear vision. But as they have mentioned as well, um, there has to be a need for this product. Otherwise, you know, a vision can be also very unrealistic. But if this is a very clear road and you can tell the people, then it sticks into the mind. Would all of you agree or? Yes. Yeah. This is very hard because for visionaries, <laughs> when is the right timing? Yeah. And I, I was mentioning to you the, the conference I attended in Amsterdam uh, where amongst yeah. the Professor Silver, there was another gentleman and he presented about space tourism and how he as a former pilot was investing in space tourism. That's not 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, potentially uh, it was at that time not the right timing. Yeah. Um, but again, go tell a visionary. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, we have again a question from Tanisha to everyone. Is it possible to pitch yourself and your business successfully without having years of experience to back you up? So what if I'm not that experienced? What, is, what if this is a new idea, maybe a new concept, new project, maybe something that I'm passionate about, but I don't have the experience, maybe not the background? I really recommend if you have to do a pitch and you're not so secure if it's right, look for people who are honest to you and give you honest feedback. Mm -hmm. Because if your grandmother for example, or a friend of yours or a potential business partner doesn't understand what you tell them, you can assume that also the investors or who else 
does not understand and you can work on it. So be open for this feedback and I would really um, practice it. Look for people and tell, you know, sometimes it's much harder to pitch before your family than before investors because you know them and what would they think about you or friends. Yeah. So I really recommend if you feel unsecure, just try it or look in the mirror and tell yourself what you want to tell. And, you know, reflect on that and really honest feedback from people is very uh, worthful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me, what would you say? What if I don't have any experience in running the numbers or maybe I don't have any background in, I don't know, accounting or anything else and all of a sudden I need to prepare KPIs, need to prepare my revenue, my forecast, whatever it is, how, how can people handle this and then present it? You, you have the luck that you can go to a person who has experience with something mm -hmm. like that. And also in the, in the digital world, you have a, a lot of opportunities to look at. And also, like you said, Gabriela, uh, go to people who have experienced and told to them also. And go also the hard facts. So what is for investor, what is essential is the revenues, the hard facts and so on. Mm -hmm. How is it for you in, in the organization? You say that... No, I, I believe that, you know, we're living in a, in a time of acceleration. So today will be never as slow. <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow will be faster. Uh, and what, what this, in, this entails is, if I look at myself now, um, is that experience might be slightly overrated and then the um, half-life of experience is getting shorter and shorter. So in the past, after 30 years, you could decide to go to a consultancy, but your knowledge would then potentially mm -hmm. give you another 10 years of lifetime. Mm -hmm. And now it might only be six months because the next new thing is around the corner. So people should again uh, be more confident as also companies are aware that change agents will not potentially come from the senior ranks, um, but um, they are more in the coordination and, and, and far side how that will be embedded into the company. But the change will come from young people with less experience, definitely. And maybe I would like to add, because uh, there are also these incubator programs existing, maybe you to apply for such a program or organization like us, we are doing free of cost services with coachings and workshops in order to prepare this number, your business model, etc. So look in your surrounding, are there institutions that are professionally supporting you? And often it's really free of cost or you just have to apply, uh, apply for such, uh, such an incubator. And this is especially important because normally these people also have the right networks for you and then you know it's easier. Mm -hmm. And would you say, because we were talking about teams and that teams are important, um, would you say that with regard to funding or investments um, or even being accepted at incubators and other um, accelerators um, that a team where at least one person has the experience that is necessary to take the business one step further is important or can the team consist of all newbies? Kind yes, of? they are there. <laughs> they because up. it's really, I think it's really often learning by doing. Mm -hmm. I know so many young teams who ha don't have this experience, but they have so re revolutionary approaches to very classical branches and that's why they you know have a chance on the market and they are really learning by doing and i know many startups who really go from one incubation accelerator programs to the other because it's always it makes a difference if you're in an incubation program in vienna or in new york or in london it means every time you get another network another expertise another market entry experience and this is how you really can scale Mm -hmm. much easier. So I know many startups, we have one from China and from Dubai also now uh, having their headquarters here in Vienna and they just got through five or six accelerator programs and that's how the education of the team happened, so to say, because with this they learned a lot and then with the experience, first piloting, first product, prototype, etc., first market entry, they learn every day. It's not always an easy journey. Mm, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know that better than I yeah. mean, but, uh, uh, you know, it's really learning and trial and error. And it's also this failing. You always have to calculate how to fail. Mm. What's the worst case and can I afford it? Mm -hmm. And if not, okay, I have to do something different because nobody wants to, uh, you know, at the, in the end have no money and death and no perspective. So yeah. you also somehow have to calculate the risk 
Alexander, you said that in your organization, people also have to pitch. You are very um, structured in this way. Um, if you select the teams, you said like two thirds are female from, from change teams. Um, is it always one person as well there that has the experience already? Or do you also like go for teams that are all newbies or are all new to a specific field? And, and how do you handle this? Yeah, as you mentioned, it's quite important to have the right selection of people. So the project manager himself, he's then, let's say, topic agnostic, but he needs to run the project per se. Mm -hmm. And then depending on what kind of project you're running, then you have the expertise. But this expertise very often can be very young people because they are bringing in the new expertise. Mm -hmm. And uh, specifically, if you're looking into digitalization and all the projects that are moving along, uh, you try then to find the right mix between, let's say, certain people that are who know the organization because you need to bring this into the organization mm -hmm. and those who bring then the expertise um, and then they are responsible for for content and, and for, for the success of that project. Mm -hmm. And the project manager himself who is agnostic to it, he will just make sure that we keep all the timelines and it's done in budget on time. In budget and on time. And okay. also science tells us that uh, diverse teams are more successful and this exactly means that it doesn't mean that you all have to be young and unexperienced yeah. but the right mix of competences the person bring in is key, yeah. is key. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay very good um, we have another question for everyone personal opinion do you prefer a serious pitch or one that tries to you to use humor humor is always good <laughs> yeah well, how, what, what do you say it's a combination humor? i would say combination yes okay for me, for me it's also a combination it's uh, like the pitch i said before of surfing fries it was the mixed about the personal storytelling with charismatic guy also as humor but also the hard facts behind it okay what would you say you might use it as an icebreaker but i guess uh, it's important to know your audience so <laughs> i guess have a look who who are you presenting to uh, what's the topic you're presenting yeah and then you might use a certain twist to things uh, to again i mentioned earlier create the right images that leave a mm -hmm. certain uh, yeah. effect a certain impact so that might be uh, helpful and despite this advice now really on your personal opinion if i say serious one or humor one which ones are the ones that you remind or remember which ones are the ones that you say well i'd like that one just really plain yeah. personal without yeah, it's advice. humor from my side. Humor? And what I really remember now is also one pitch. The, this team just had three slides. Okay. And this was perfect because all the others had, you know, for five minutes, 10 slides. And this was like, and then the one <laughs> which just three slides and very um, interesting pictures, a little humoric. Mm -hmm. This was so amazing and they just managed that I kept the figures anyway in my mind mm -hmm. because they connected the, their numbers with these pictures and this really got stuck into my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about you, Tommy? Um, I will say the serious one. <laughs> okay. <at the> end. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have expected a difference. <laughs> okay, so the serious one. Yes. Okay, no, okay, good. And for you, Alexander? Yeah, I'll be looking for a certain set of numbers, and okay. once it is a tick in the box, okay. I feel relieved, and then I'm open. I think to <laughs> yeah. run yeah. and, oh, okay. and to get pictures, and because if if you say, okay, please come to the, you know, where where yeah. is now the, the big wow effect? Okay. And it you know it's there's just I mean a, a kind of entertainment, yeah, but, <laughs> or educational, but I want to see the the strong point. Uh, yeah. So once that is here. Um, if, of course, humor comes on top, then, then first, okay, good. <laughs> more enjoyable. Okay, okay. I, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I was even thinking about, because you mentioned earlier, there's this stage, I think it's very important to yeah. keep in mind at what stage the pitch is happening, at what stage are they looking for money to bring them to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, for example, if you look at B series, C series, um, that, that you're asking, of course, you're already mm -hmm. an existing company, you're for next level. I think there are very important elements right now on sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what is their code on that? Um, then if you look also social responsibility, mm -hmm. what's your governance system? I think those are elements that I think would come afterwards after a certain size on top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I just want to have it mentioned because no, I, that's think, very I, I, very, I, I saw yeah, your yeah, input because I think we were talking a lot about the early entry yeah, level. That's true. Uh, and when you mentioned that, I said, oh, you're right. 
but mm -hmm. I think afterwards there are some additional elements we would probably mm -hmm. be looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, question to everyone again. What would you suggest to do if a mistake happens? For example, forgetting things, stumbling, um, stumbling upon words, just continuing or apologizing? That's a hard one. It's a tough one, right? Yes. Yeah. What would you say? Well, so it, it depends. It depends on the mistake. Well, if we talk about um, maybe a hanger, I, I forget things, I forgot what I wanted to say. Do I say, well, excuse me, I forgot it? Or or do I just continue to the next slide? Like, so it's, it's, Is it important to the, to the facts or to the pitch? Or if it's important, then I will apologize mm -hmm. and I will, um, I will uh, t uh, tell them a second time. But it's not necessary. They will keep on going. Yeah, I, I really have several pitches in mind where the people excuse it themselves and I thought, why now? Yeah. Because they just tell me what they can tell me. And if they forget something, I don't know that they forgot something. Mm -hmm. And this excuse makes an emphasis on it where it, it's different if really something serious happens and they tell me the wrong numbers. Then I would say, excuse me, but if I just forget something, uh, just tell what you want to tell me. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know what you forgot. Mm -hmm. it's, and sometimes this excusing is somehow irritating for me. In, if I sit in a jury, I really think, why do they excuse now? They just should tell me, use the time to tell me the right things. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. okay. But it's really depending on the situation and what happens. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Alexander, well, sorry. Yeah, I think, the, the, as you mentioned, that sometimes it's not necessary because people are in the flow. It might be something that you only know and not your audience. But when there's a real elephant in the room and you don't address it, yes. yeah. <laughs> then sometimes I feel uncomfortable and I would tell them, please stop, yeah. relax, have a glass of water, yeah. uh, and then let's continue. Okay. Um, rather than everyone pretending everything is fine. And in, in reality, you see now this, this entire yeah. thing is, yeah. is on shaky grounds. So um, again, depending on, uh, I think this goes more into the basic presentation techniques and skills. Yeah, probably, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, from Velvet to all, do you have examples of confident and passionate pitches from professionals that may come from a more modest culture or value system? Mm -hmm. Do you have examples of confident and passionate pitches from professionals that may come from a more modest value system or more modest culture I, I just saw that ali malochi went out mm -hmm. he was in a panel discussion before us and he's really one who is i would say this kind of pitch expert mm -hmm. um and also daniel cronin is one so if you're interested to see some examples i can really recommend to to uh, look in the internet uh, for their pitches, I, I, re I think really think they have a very smart and modest way of telling their story, their messages. And um, this value system is all, I know that for investors and funding, always numbers are very important. But I think more and more uh, the topics you mentioned uh, are really more key now. Um, and it's also media. The media tells us ah, um, so many millions of euro were raised, but no, nobody asks, OK, what they are doing with it and what are the effects of that? So I think if you have here more maybe modest approach and a smart approach, I think this can also be outstanding then mm -hmm. if you pitch somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else that comes to your mind maybe in the professional? For me, not at the way? moment. Okay, Alexander. Maybe? I was wondering whether they meant by modest and humble. Yes. So how you come across, yes. and I think being humble, I think that that uh, is always uh, appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, of course, then there are let's say cultures or upbringings that where people are more outspoken, but again, that can be trained. So again, I think by repetition, preparing, then you can be firm and confident about what you're saying. But by being humble, I think that is never a, a negative uh, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, okay, very good, thank you. Uh, I'll just check real quick. I think we have all the questions through. I hope I didn't forget anyone, but it looks good so far. Mm.
Maybe we can do one more. Um, just really briefly, personally, what do you personally look for when meeting a founder? For the first time. Founder comes up to you and what, what is important for you for the first impression of that person? It's already how he or she approaches me. Because, you know, I got messages, oh, it would be nice to talk with you. And I, I was like, okay, <laughs> there are many others as well. So what and why and how? <laughs> so a little bit more information about what exactly is the person interested in me uh, or what I can offer for them. Because then I, I have a clear picture. I'm the right one or do I know somebody else who is the right person to get in touch with mm -hmm. in the first hand? Because it's always also... A matter of time management and time is limited and you need to focus somehow and if the person who approaches me can give me a very clear picture how I can help maybe then I can decide okay I'm the right one or do I know somebody else who is the right person mm -hmm. to connect, connect them yeah, yeah. Okay. Tommy what is your so first when I meet a founder at the first time yeah. for example if it comes to me as a tax advisor um, they are dear mm -hmm. they are dear and also his preparation for the idea so about the like i said before the cause do it as partners did have market research and something like that and also how we can manage it from the idea from the beginning up to a profitable mm -hmm. uh, like a system mm -hmm. alexander i got the sign for wrapping it up do you have real quick what's personally what you're looking uh, for when we approach uh, philip morris startups and they're coming yeah. to us uh, as part of this new way of working uh, what is important to us that really understand our business. Have they really made the homework to understand what... Have they made their homework? Yeah, that's a good point. Have they made their homework? It's a very good point for the <laughs> pitching also, yeah. So um, I would like to wrap it up. Thank you so much for participating today, Gabriele, Tomislav, and also Alexander. It was very nice meeting you. Thank you for your valuable inputs on how to get what you want when you pitch. I'm sure it was very valuable for the audience as well. And uh, I want to wish the audience um, much fun with the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.